only one who knows the course you are on. And you know that if what you are doing is going to take you where you want to go. You choose the course for your own life. One of the things we talked about in the last session was that God chose your destination, but you decide whether you get there. And I want you to follow through on the second part of this session. I thought the day would be appropriate to talk about how to chart your course to make it to your destiny. This year, for some of you, is the last chance God's given you. And I hope that you use it very, very effectively. I won't be long, but I will be strong. I promise you it's going to be very important to take what you hear today and apply it. This is the practical side of the teaching. We talked about what you need to do to improve your life and to change your life on Friday. Today I want to show you some of the steps you have to take to make sure that this year is not not like last year, that this year becomes practical, effective, disciplined, and it has in it the substance that you want to accomplish in your life. I want to speak on the kingdom keys for charting your course. I want to focus on understanding the necessity and the power of planning now. Everybody say now. Don't plan next month. You've got to start planning now if you're going to make differences in your life this year. I want to begin by talking about order. The first thing that God gave man after he created him was a garden. And God gave Adam a garden because God does not like bush. <laughs> Where this building is now used to be bush. And bush is non productive. A garden is different from a forest. What is the difference between a garden and a forest? Write it down, very important. Number one, a garden is the orderly established environment for a productive purpose. A garden is an orderly established environment for productive purposes. In other words, when you make a garden, it's because you want to bring order to the area and to make it productive. A forest is different. A forest or bush is life left to itself without intentional order. That's bush. If you just leave the bush alone, it will grow. Matter of fact, when you leave this premises today, drive real slow when you go by the bush area. And you will see that there is disorder, confusion, all kind of plants mixed with one another. And there is no sense of productivity or sense of control. There is just disorder. Because where there is no intentional order, you have bush. Some of our lives, sad to say, are not gardens. They become bush. Sometimes you ask people, what did you do this past year? They can't quite tell you exactly what they accomplished. Because all they did was just grew. They grew last year. They grew fatter. They grew more ignorant. They grew more broke. They grew more confused. And they had no intention in their lives. God created you to develop like a garden, not to grow like a forest. That's why God gave Adam a garden. And he told Adam to keep it in order. Adam's job was to protect and maintain the order that God provided for him. God wants you to develop your life orderly. So don't drift into 2005 
I hope it comes out right. If you drift into this year hoping that things work out okay, I guarantee you they will not. Because God created you to live an intentional life. If you don't develop like a garden, you become a bush. This session is to protect you from becoming bush. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8 says, Now the Lord God himself planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put the man. God didn't give Adam a bush experience. Can I suggest to you that we've been taught by evolutionists that the early men were bushmen. But according to the Bible, the first man was a gardener. And God gave him order. Which means God didn't allow man to develop eventually into order. He began him with order. That means you don't eventually develop order for this year. God wants you to stop this day, today, and start bringing order before you live the rest of this year. I like what it says in verse chapter, chapter 2, verse 15. It says, The Lord God took the man and put him where? In the garden of Eden. To what? To watch it and to take care of it. God didn't want the garden to grow into a bush. Now let me tell you how a garden grows into a bush. You can start out with a good plan and not follow it. Making plans and making these covenants that we placed on the altar the other day and believing God for these things that we want to do. God is happy to have these plans. He says, wow, I'm so happy to see you doing something, at least making the first step. He says, now, are you going to do the next step? Which is to orderly plan to make it to these destinies you wrote down. I would like to stop you in June and have another meeting and have you all stand up and tell me how far have you come closer to what you wrote down in January. Give us a report, a midterm report on your progress. You see, if you don't order it now, there will be disorder later. First Corinthians 14 is a verse that has kept me as a teenager. When I first read this, I was in South Street, Bain Town, here in the Bahamas. And it changed my life. I didn't realize it was in the Bible. It says, Let all things be done decently and in order. God wants your life to be decently organized and orderly planned. Because God is a God of precision. If you do not bring order to your life, you will grow into disorder. I come here with a word today. Listen to me carefully. The statements that I'm going to read are from the Bible, but they are very practical. And I want you to write them down. Proverbs chapter 16 verses 1 says, To man belongs the plans of the heart. But from the Lord comes the answer of the tongue. Turn to that chapter, please. Very important chapter. Proverbs 16. Plan your way out of death this year. Plan your way into health this year. Plan your way out of bad company this year. Plan your way out of the position you end to your next promotion. Plan it. Notice, God doesn't say He makes your plans. Read that verse. It says, the heart of a man makes the plan. The word heart here means mind. Which means that God has given you the intellectual ability and capacity to literally plan a future. You have the brain power provided by God to use your mind to plan what you need to do this year to accomplish what you want to accomplish at the end of this year. God gave you that responsibility. Then he says, and he will give the answer to the town. Now look at the next verse. Proverbs 16 verse 3 says, Then commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. 